thank you very much for having me. I uh, was supposed to start off with a joke, but uh, sometimes telling a joke in front of a group as large as you is not a wise idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your support of your own organization. Uh, we definitely do a great service. Uh, I am a unapologetic conservative. I am a Christian. I am a Virginian from that slow-talking Southwest. <laughs> a Republican who believes in the Constitution, who believes in limited government, who believes in the sanctity of life, and who believes in your unrestricted right to keep and bear arms. And most importantly, I understand that when these principles are left untended, they will cease to exist. And so will our liberty. Because make no mistake, republics have no inertia, and tyrants thrive on neglect. It is from our actions or inactions which will determine the future of Virginia. And I cannot leave the chance or wait for another person to determine the course of Virginia. And that's why I am running for lieutenant governor. As lieutenant governor, I will proudly stand to defend the rights of the unborn and those traditional family values, those values which have served Virginia well for so long. I will give voice to your demand for fiscal conservatism and an end of overburdened, burdensome, uh, confiscatory tax policy. And I will push back at an ever-growing government, a government that is intent on usurping every God-given right and responsibility that you ever had. I think the solution is simple. It's your life. It's your family. It's your business. As your lieutenant governor, I will not raise taxes. I will not raise revenues on the backs of Virginia drivers who have user fees or unconstitutional regional taxing authorities as others so-called fiscal conservatives have done much like my opponent. A budget that has doubled to 77 billion in the last 10 years needs no more revenue. I will not continue to feed the beast. I will work hard to remove the encumbrances of unduly regulation on the free enterprise and allow Virginia to grow and produce those jobs that Virginia wants and deserves. And tonight, I will tell you, I will fight with my last breath to defend your right to keep and bear arms. I will not allow pro-gun legislation to die in committee or be scrubbed from the legislative agenda, as has happened the last couple of sessions. I will not allow that to happen. I grew up on my family farm in Giles County, rural Giles County. So I spent only a time hunting and fishing. I'm actually not too bad of a shot, especially when you're talking about clay pigeons and slow rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Now, hunting is a Virginia, is part of Virginia heritage, and I support that. But the Second Amendment is more than just hunting. As a young parent, miles away from the towns and our nearest neighbors, my mother relied on a Ruger 22 that the sheriff convinced her to purchase. And I can recall many times when my father was away, her having to, sh to take shots in the air, warning shots, to discourage prowlers or some unknown wrongdoing. She relied and she felt comfort in her rights, in her gun rights. And contrary to, to, public, to public opinion in Richmond, the right to self-defense does not stop at the front door, it does not stop at Main Street, and it does not stop on college campuses. There is no question in my mind, nor I guess yours, that the Second Amendment includes the right of self-protection. But there is a fundamental, there is a fundamental purpose for the Second Amendment beyond self-protection. 
I think we all learned about the separation of powers, about the checks and balances within our government and in school. At least I think they still teach that. But the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and the executive branch. But what is often left out is we the people. Because it is we the people who hold the ultimate power and the ultimate checks and balances on government. As someone mentioned before, and those we we hold that power through our votes and we hold those rights through the exercise of the first, second, and the Tenth Amendment. As Thomas Jefferson is often quoted, the strongest reason for people to retain the right to keep and bear arms is, as a last resort, to protect themselves against the tyrannical government. And hence, Virginia's motto, Six Semper Tyrannus, thus to all tyrants. As your Lieutenant Governor, I will introduce legislation that repeals the so-called restaurant ban, that repeals the one gun a month restriction, that reopens campuses to conceal carry, and fund gun safety courses in the public schools. And I will resist all federal assaults that will, that will want to restrict Virginians' use of guns. And they're sure to come out of the Obama administration. And I'll be there to fight those off. When it comes to the Second Amendment, my fellow patriots, I will be there by your side, locked and loaded as one of Liberty's guardians. <clears throat> Together, we have an unprecedented opportunity to boldly affect the course of Virginia policy on gun in the next several years. And I urge you to embrace this opportunity. But it is not enough to believe. We must actually act. It is only through divine providence that we are blessed to be in a nation where several have, have fought and died for our rights of self-determination and self-governance. The burden of preserving our liberty is now on us. We cannot advocate our responsibility to future generations. Our forefathers pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to create and defend our liberty. At Yorktown, Manassas, and Normandy, Virginians past fulfilled that pledge. The question is, will we? I say ask us, join, join me. Join me as we take back Virginia. Thank you very much. <clears throat>